Zach, the Clarkson family tree is nothing like we thought it was. We need to reorganize everything we've uncovered so far. Okay. She was so tired she fell right to sleep. Hey, Zach. I'm in a very difficult spot right now. I feel like this case is heading in a direction that will be extremely unpleasant for her. I've never felt anything like this during any of our cases thus far. Okay, aktualisieren wir das Ganze. First, let's go back to the beginning. Lise Clarkson's body was found hanging under a bridge over the bayou. In a deserted spot close to where the bayou meets the Mississippi. The one who fired the pistol at heaven surely had no idea what he would find there. Speaking of which, Zach, Chuck, the man who started this race we're running, what's his occupation? Er ist Schrimpfarmer oder Krabbenfarmer oder sowas. Flusskrebszüchter. Das ist es. That's right. He's a crawfish farmer. And after chasing a poacher's boat that crossed over into his farmland, he went up the bayou and was fortunate enough to find Lisa's body. I doubt it was a very pleasant experience for him. But if not for his discovery, Lisa's body might have started rotting out there. He's a difficult person to be sure, but I don't think he's a bad guy. Chuck said something peculiar. He claimed the Clarksons were a little better when their son was still around. I don't know exactly what he meant, but we ended up meeting the person he was talking about, didn't we? Under very unexpected circumstances. Leonard Clarkson. He ran away from home, found his true self, then changed names. Sozak. Do you remember her name? So Helena, yes, can I say, I can't remember Lena, actually. Helena Doman. The townspeople call her Lena. Yeah, she was also known as Professor R while she plotted against the Clarksons. She's the mother of the new drug known as Saint Rouge. She must have also had a group of followers who worshipped her fanatically. I can see it now. Lena sprinkling down the red powder, corrupting every last pure and innocent girl in town. Lena mentioned her plan each time we met. She must have taken us for utter fools, Zack. She thought she was always one step ahead of us, and that we'd never see the full scope of her plan. Well, her plan isn't complete yet, and I know we can still stop it. That's why we need to learn all we can about her. Her alias was Professor R., and she was well learned in the areas of medicine and fire dynamics. By the way, Nein, ich habe irgendwas weggedrückt. Ich habe irgendwas weggedrückt. Ich weiß nicht was. Mit einer Minibombe ist sie gestorben, wenn es darum geht. Ja. Correct. She used a miniature bomb. To tell you the truth, she surprised me. That bomb was so well placed. It left hardly any damage on the building itself. Yet still did amazing work on them. Lena should have used that brain of hers for something more productive than that saga of revenge. For example, reviving Lucare's economy from the industrial sector. Widen your perspective and you'll see that Louisiana is an industrial treasure trove. With her intelligence and her charisma, I'm sure she would have found some amazing opportunities. Such a tragedy. Zach, there's one more important matter we need to think about here. Galena Clarkson, who was murdered in jail. 
Her body was dismembered, then rearranged into a V-shape. Patty and Melvin claimed it was a severed roots killing. But that doesn't make sense to me. And PJ Clarkson disapproved of it when I met him in the other world. He saw Galena's parts lined up and was overcome by an inexplicable fear. Tell me, who killed Galena? Unfortunately, we don't have the answer to this one yet. And it's too big a problem to solve with mere speculation. The answer to this question may lead to a major turning point for this case, and the final turning point for this story. You know it's true, Zack. I only hope it doesn't push us down an avenue we didn't plan on exploring. Hey, Zack, do you remember PJ's last words? Lenny had intercourse with his older sister. His own flesh and blood. So, it's good to this means it's there's still one more person out there who inherited PJ's blood. Ah, oh, fucking poachers! Now I gotcha. Caught you red-handed. Jetzt ist Kapitel 2 zu Ende. Jetzt habe ich wirklich Angst, dass ich die Nebenquests nicht mehr machen kann. Aber schauen wir mal. Schauen wir mal weiter. Jetzt mal ganz cool bleiben. Ganz ruhig bleiben. 18,5 Stunden. 8 Tage Aufenthalt. Was Ab Abwendung von Katastrophen bedeutet, würde mich interessieren. Naja. Soon, I'm almost there. Just please, someone, stop that noise. Ah! Ah! 
2019 Let me try and summarize this. Helena Doman was the mastermind behind the entire incident. But Helena Doman was actually P.J. Clarkson's son, who had severed ties with the family. Helena was also known as Professor R., the mother brain behind the drug known as Saint Rouge. That's right. She was responsible for everything? Not everything, but... Most of it. Almost everything went according to her plan. But if you'd already figured out that much, why did you continue to stay in Lucare? Because we had to. You had to? Whatever for? The goddess was still there. The goddess? The goddess of fertility. Lise Clarkson's body. <laughs> Not her. She was as beautiful as a goddess, but she wasn't the goddess. She was just a tragic victim. Then who is the goddess of fertility? The person at the root of this case. Is it some kind of metaphor? For example, the vast wealth that the red powder yielded. <laughs> the goddess of fertility embodied abundance on the outside, but on the inside, she was a hollow void. And that void was threatening to swallow up all of Lucare. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Uh, are you okay, Mr. Morgan? Morgan almost sounds like a prophet talking about the end of the world. Vague, elusive, and intent on deceiving those who listen. But every now and then, he adds an interval of truth. Patricia Clarkson is one of those. She's something special. Something irreplaceable to him. Okay. Briefe darf ich nicht. Also muss ich als letztes ansprechen. It looks like he burned something other than firewood in here. Did he destroy something when he figured out we were coming? Or maybe it's just a red herring meant to throw us off. I know how he operates. I can't take anything at face value. <sighs> By the way, you're still searching for Patricia, yes? 
You don't need to worry about that. We're investigating. In fact, we've almost reached our goal. We just need to find some conclusive evidence. Oh, we sincerely hope that's the case. Hard to believe, though. After all, so far you've just been barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree? That's right. You shouldn't be wasting time here. You should be out there. Look at Then I'll just ask you straight away. Do you know where she is? No. We don't. But we can feel her when we close our eyes and become one with the world. It's very faint. But we can see her. We can see Patricia. Are you trying to distract me again? Or do you really expect me to believe you're clairvoyant or something? <laughs> What do you think we are, X-Men? It's metaphysical offender profiling. He actually asked me where Patricia is? Does he have full confidence that we'll never find her? Fine. I can deal with that. I'll just ask him everything I can about the Lucare case. Jetzt leuchten hier auch schon wieder beide. Ja. By the way, how did the FBI find Lisa's body after 14 whole years? That's none of your business. Are you saying they just happened to be investigating the Clarkson's cold storage warehouse by pure chance that there was some undercover terrorism plot at foot there? I said it's none of your business. Well, then we'll just have to guess. It was an anonymous tip. A tip related to San Rouge. Did we hit the nail on the head, Belna? <laughs> not what we want to know about. After all, the FBI gets hundreds of tips every day. Right, my fairy? It was always that way. He Here's what we really want to know. Why, out of all those tips, did you select that one? Would you tell us that much, Bell? What urged you? to make a beeline straight for this case. That's... none of your business. Wo ist eigentlich der andere? Kommt der wieder? This square area enclosed by milk cartons. Is it another sanctuary? The more I look around, the more I feel like there's some sort of system to all this. The sanctuary on this table. The fireplace sanctuary. And the milk carton sanctuary. They all lead into the room back there. And there's one more by the window, and yet another by my feet. Are they signs? Or is this all some sort of path? Hey, Belle. Is that a serious question? Of course it is. We're drying them out. We line the milk cartons up to dry them out. So we can turn them into Halloween decorations. Halloween? It's only January. This is America. Land of the free. Got a problem with that?
So you think Galena was it. murdered by Helena Dolman, her own brother? No, not her. Galena was someone else. Then who killed her? It's written in the report, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. But I'm asking you. Would you mind answering me in your own words? You see, I find your entire story highly suspicious. <sighs> it's a complicated matter. Extremely complicated. Don't let him draw you into his game. Stay calm, Aaliyah Davis. Aaliyah Davis, you stay calm. The future influences the present just as much as the past. You asked me why I spent an entire two days observing you before I came to speak with you. Well, here's why. Over those 49 hours, I observed the intervals between your actions. When you were neither doing something nor doing nothing. I intently studied your intervals between action to action, and action to inaction, to action. People reveal everything during the intervals between their actions. For example, when you eat alone versus eating with someone else. The most prominent differences always appear when someone either begins or finishes eating a meal. And since these are unconscious actions, they can't be consciously hidden. When you prepare to eat or finish eating. When you move in to clean up. When you pick up a book or close one. When you raise a cup of coffee to your lips. Human actions speak volumes. Not even the person doing the actions is conscious of them. That's what lies in those intervals. That's my modus operandi. And here's the conclusion it helped me reach. There's one other person in this house. Isn't there? <laughs> You're incredible, Belle. You outdid all our expectations. Impressive, to say the least. You're right, Belle. But only half right. Half? You should still be proud, though. Honestly, we never thought you'd make it this far. You've got real talent. <laughs> Most of what you If this goes to court, I won't let you claim that your testimony is inadmissible just because of your little indulgence there. Fine by us. We can even put it in writing if you want. We won't run or hide. Will we, my fairy? Where's the, the paper? I know I had it around here somewhere. Where, where is it? Oh. 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 We're fine. Hey, everything okay? What's going on out here? Oh, don't tell me. He's just suffering from nausea. I was more worried about you. You were in there for quite some time. Yeah, sorry. Ever since you got here, I've been all backed up. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, can you stand? Oh. Is this a sign from the coffee? What, what could it be? What is it trying to tell me? What? Really? Think. Is that a dragonfly? Oh, that was fun. Footsteps. Big footsteps. Footsteps. Big 
footsteps. Some odd fella was following her around. Stalking her like. That poor girl, Lace, she was a druggie. And she was into the really bad stuff. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess. Mentally and physically. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. You okay? Hey. We're fine. Just... Feeling a little tired. Would you take us to get our medicine? Uh, sure. It's in the bathroom, right? Whew. <sighs> Seems like he's calmed down a little. We should let him rest for a while. One more step and I could have cornered Morgan. But so be it. I can still keep investigating even if the owner of this chair isn't present. Simon Jones, what a piece of work. How can anyone have such bad timing? I wondered what sort of food he was eating, all shut up in here. Pizza? Why do they all love pizza so much? Yeah, pizza is super. Pizza is like a saftig delicious bread. <laughs> and through the Belag, there are quasi in unendlich vielen verschiedenen Variationen. It's the ultimate Nahrungsmittel. Reichhaltig, abwechslungsreich, and voller Käse. What will man mehr? What's wrong, Aaliyah? You hungry or something? Excuse me? What are you insinuating? Well, you're staring right at an empty pizza box. Please don't compare yourself to me. Besides, I have a refined palate. Hey, that was uncalled for. Pizza is a sacred food, remember? You don't need to feel embarrassed for being unable to stop staring at it. It enthralls all who gaze upon it. That's the power of pizza. Stop, Agent Jones. The power. I've had enough of this sacred pizza bit. The power of pizza. I'm sick of you Chicagoans and your obsession with pizza. Pizza, 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 24 hours a day, that's all you ever talk about. D Ugh. What's next? You gonna launch into a tirade about how deep dish is the only proper way to make pizza? No, 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 Aaliyah. You just don't get it, do you? As a Chicagoan, I'm proud of the deep dish pizza. But get this, I love New York style pizza too. It doesn't matter what kind of pizza it is. As long as it's a pizza, it's beautiful. Er liebt alle Pizzen gleichermaßen. Das ist gut. Wenn ich noch einmal Pizza habe, kriege ich Hunger. Ich habe zum Glück gerade vorher viel zu viel gegessen. Ich bin satt. What? Still don't get it? Okay, here. I'm going to put it in terms that I'm sure even you could understand. All pizzas are created equal. Eat your heart out, Nietzsche. Just forget I mentioned anything. <laughs> 